when my wife and I found ourselves in the immigration office in Germany as we were preparing to move there. I'd spend a year studying at a seminary and my wife was going to be teaching at an international school. We'd heard all about what we needed to do at this immigration office to get our visas, which were going to be so important for us to stay. And we were at the end of our interview with the immigration officer when she asked for one more document that we didn't know if we had. Our, our level of urgency and anxiety started to rise and she could see it. And so in her graciousness, she offered to try to translate for us into English because she only spoke German what it was she was looking for. As it turns out, this one last piece of information she needed was our marriage license. We had it, we were able to give it to her, and the rest is now history. So what was so important about this little piece of paper and the writing that is on it? Today, we're gonna to talk about the sixth commandment and what God's best is for us when it comes to our sexual identity and our sexual relationships. This marriage license is a legal document from the state of Michigan that was signed and dated on the day that we were married and officially declares that my wife and I have committed ourselves to each other, excluding all others, so long as we both show live. This document forms a legal relationship in the United States, and it also stands as a testimony to what God has done in our lives as well. For what Jesus teaches us is that what God joins together in marriage, nothing, no one, not a single force on earth should ever try to separate. Now why is that? Well, let's go back to the beginning and the way that God made us in the first place. When we read through the book of Genesis, we discover that God made us male and female. Into our DNA, into our biology, our physiology, our emotions, and our spirituality, God has hardwired our identity as men and women, girls and boys. And from the beginning, he desired that we should explore and experience the fullness of our identity when we enjoy the gift of life together in marriage. After all, when he made Adam and saw that on his own he was incomplete and unsatisfied, he made for him a woman and brought her to him, thus making the first marriage ever. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, we're told, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. When Jesus tried to teach on the value of marriage, he went back to that very verse when he said, what well, God joins together, no one should stop, try to separate. Now here's the reality. God has designed us as sexual beings, and he desires for us to experience that fully within the context of marriage. And yet in our lives today, and especially yours as middle school students, there is all sorts of pressure to explore and express your sexuality in ways that are less than God's best. You may remember, when I define sin, I like to define it in terms of what is less than God's best, because God does have a dream and a desire for us, and it's good. Uh, anything less than that, anything that comes up short, always hurts. So his desire is that we would experience the joys and the fullness of our sexual identity only within the relationship we have with our husband or our wife once we are married. Now, anything before that, outside of that, or even after that, any activity that is sexual in nature, or it comes up short of God's best. In your mind, this could play out in terms of improper sexual thoughts. They may be stimulated by what you see in a movie, or on a TikTok video, or on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, or at the movie theater, or even as you're walking down the street and you see a billboard. It might be in the words that you say. And so that's why Dr. Martin Luther, when he tried to explain for us what this sixth commandment was all about, he said, we should fear and love God so that we'd lead sexually pure and decent lives. We shouldn't settle for anything less than that. We need to learn to discipline and control our thoughts and our actions and then focus them on what his best is for us, experiencing the fullness of our sexuality within the context of marriage. That's why he adds to it, and husbands and wives love and honor each other. Now this is an area where we're all gonna struggle. And I want you to know that as you do, God's grace is sufficient for you, and his power is made perfect in your weakness. And that's not any excuse 
to indulge in the temptations we may have that are less than God's best. But it's a reminder that when you do stumble and fall, God will always be there to lift you up. So friends, God has a dream for you when it comes to your sexuality and your relationships. And his desire is to see you thrive in it and nothing less. Let's pursue God's best when it comes to sexually pure and decent lives. Thank you.